Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we're finding, learning, and turning the great strategy games. Today, we get kicked off with our PBEM challenge. And I say kicked off, we've already set up, and I did several episodes on that. Probably not quite as in-depth as I did uh, in our play against the AI, because I wanted to go through every unit for that. So if you're curious, you know, how to set up different forces and whatnot, check that one out. Now in the setup for this game, I did go through kind of some, you know, bigger intermediate concepts, but uh, we didn't go through every unit. It just takes too long when I'm talking through it so i did you know show you how to set up certain areas and certain things but not all of them um i sent that over to Lodric, and as it goes with play by email in this game um he hits you know he gets it he spits out a combat turn so when he gets it he gets a makes a combat file which takes his orders and my orders, and this is a we go game, so it all happens at the same time, all comes together in a big old uh, mash to see what happens. And so he sent, he kindly sent that back to me early, and then he'll take that file, put in his next orders, his turn three orders, send it back to me. We'll do our turn three orders. I'll send it back to him, and then he'll send us another combat uh, file. So what is this going to be? This is going to be the results of all of the orders uh, Logic put in, and then I put in for turn two. And so we got everything set up. Things will be moving around the map. Uh, we may get some submarine activity. I'm almost certain we will from both sides. Uh, we'll also have a lot of our ships trying to get the heck out of places. Uh, we'll see if we're successful in that. Uh, sometimes you can get a few things out here or there. Uh, sometimes you can't. <laughs> we'll just see. We're kind of at his mercy early on. Obviously, uh, we don't have a lot of uh, defensive ships that can come and, you know, uh, escort those transports out or do other things like that so we'll just see if his submarines if he's got them set up in good spots uh he may be able to pick some things off so we'll go down to load a save game and as you can see when i do a let's play uh you can see how i save every single way down the <laughs> down the list here uh, australia borneo burma canada i would always recommend that when you're setting up as the allied player you save after every you know decent sized landmass if you don't you are going to be cursing at some point because you will not get the save and all of that hard work will go down the drain so just save every single place you can as often as you can okay as you see up here play by email combat save it's all green. Let's go because the game goes directly into it. Now, how is this going to work for a play by email? Well, we're going to watch these combat files and, and, you know, see what happened in the turn. That's going to kind of be an episode in and of itself. We can't really go in then and change things or whatnot. We've got to wait for him to send back his actual orders file to do that. Now, Lodric, uh, I think, is going to be a pretty quick player. So, you know, these should follow right on. But I'm going to call this episode number four. Uh, we'll call this, you know, turn two combat. And then the next episode I put up will be me putting in the orders after this combat. So let's uh, select the save game. Get up here. Oh, no, you guys are going to see my password. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I, I typed it fast. Oh, no. Um, all right. So we're off. And you can see the initial things that the computer goes through. Uh, one of the things I love about this game is I love we go games. Uh, again, what does that mean? You know, most strategy games are I go, you know, I move my pieces, then you move your pieces, then I move my, you know, and a, a game like this, a we go game, it's one of the reasons that I love the AG odd games is everything happens at the same time. So he puts in orders, I put in orders, and then it resolves. It adds such a dynamic flavor to the game. Invasion support off of Lingayan. So he's coming in on Lingayan. Uh, he's got three transports as his ships. Uh, our coastal guns did fire. Uh, and we caused 14 casualties. He caused 15 casualties uh, in his invasion support. Okay. Well, we already knew he was coming hard for the Philippines. As a matter of fact, in turn one, he had already landed in several spots. Now, I did say we we're going to try to counterattack a little bit. 
Uh, now, this is our Minesweepers. Now, you'll find as we go into the game, Minesweepers become less and less important. But early on, uh, the Japanese already have a lot of these ports. I say a lot. They have Singapore, Manila, places like that already mined. And so you got to get your Minesweepers out there, and that's exactly what we did. Uh, we're retreating there. Uh, the, Don, uh, the John Ford locates mines, and so you see here our minesweepers, the Finch and the Lark, are out here destroying mines in and around Bataan, uh, just off of Manila. Okay, now we've got some submarine action. This is actually our Dutch sub, the SS KXIV. Um, and we go, oh, nice. So we got into one of his cargo ships out here, the Kagamaru. Now, if you're not that familiar with the game, and you can see all of this Japanese activity moving over here, uh, he's coming in strong for Malaya, as he should do, right? Um, but early on, the point I was making is the Dutch subs are so superior to the American subs for actually causing damage. Uh, they are just very good at the start of the game. And as you can see here, we got into an AK a cargo ship, Japanese cargo ship, with one of our Dutch subs. We've caused 28 casualties. Now, in the uh, animation over here, it said it was critical damage. So the Kagamaru may go down to the bottom of the sea. Uh, SSI-154, this is a Japanese sub, uh, and it looks like he got into one of our uh, plane tenders, an AF or AVP, the poolster, is a plane tender, meaning it can disband into a port and it can rearm planes and help support them. Uh, and these are very helpful, or they can be if you use them correctly. Uh, but in this case, you can see Unlike the AI, against a human player like this, he has got his subs in here immediately. The AI is much more cautious with his subs, and you can usually get a lot more stuff out. You can see our task force is coming out of Singapore, trying to get the hell out of here. He's already got a sub down here. Uh, we'll see what that uh, ends up resulting in. But right now, the AVP poolster, one of our plane tenders, is under heavy damage, will almost certainly sink. All right, and on we go, and the poolster sinks. There, that didn't take long, uh, and we had a commander that that passed. Uh, okay, now he's in on uh, another Japanese sub out here against the AK Woolen. The Woolen is a cargo ship that we're trying to get out of the northern part of Borneo, also called Sarawak at this time. Uh, we're trying to get it out of here. His sub found it, uh, but nothing. He launched two two torpedoes at it, no damage. All right, so that was the night phase or night pulse. There was always, well, we're not through it yet. I thought we were. This is that sub down here south of Singapore. He very smartly brings his subs right down here because he knows we've got to try to get everything out of Singapore that we can. You can also see up here in Singapore, we've mined, <laughs> we've mined the port He's mined the port. That's what those little dots mean. Uh, so there's a lot of mines floating around in Singapore. Now, he launched two torpedoes at our uh, transport ship, the Kida. There were three units I was trying to get out of Singapore in the initial wave. Uh, he's firing on them already. Can the Kida get away? We'll see. He's got more than two uh, torpedoes, believe me. So he may take another shot at the Kida. Now, I brought them out of here coming... Um, yeah, the Pope, the Pope is sunk. That was already uh, damaged in Manila uh, during the initial bombing raid, so no surprise there. The SS-150, I-157, that's another Japanese sub. He's going after a small cargo ship that we have, the Shanai, that was also part of this group trying to get out. I think they were coming out of Kuching, uh, potentially, the British base in Sarawak. Um, they were trying to get out of there. You know, you're going to lose some of these. If we're going to lose something, let's lose one of those little AKLs. That's probably only a one-point ship. We'll just escape through that. Uh, Japanese, the I-157. The Shanai was hit seven times. Shell hit seven. That's on the surface. He was hit with two torpedoes. Uh, yeah, he's going down. Heavy fires, heavy damage. And sure enough, the Shanai sinks. 
uh, and we this captain has been killed. Surface combat checks, divide cripple task forces, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're doing damage control. We've got a lot of things they're going to uh, sink out here uh, by Manila. They just got hit in that first wave, so we've lost the Whippoorwill, which is a mine sweeper. Um, the Sea Dragon looks like it may go down. Temporary flotation repairs are failing. Uh, the Neptuna, which is a transport ship, has also sunk. Uh, now he's in on Guam, and so this is a cruiser. Uh, he's bringing out the big guns for Guam. As he starts to hit there, we'll escape through that. Uh, this is just bombard. Look at that bombardment! Boom, 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 boom. It goes nuts when you hit escape. Oh, look at this. He's got four cruisers, four destroyers out here, uh, ready for a full invasion of Guam. 79 casualties reported on our side, so he's, you know, softening up uh, the base force there at Guam. Uh, he's now landing at Lingayan. This is the Terracura Maru. Uh, we actually fired back from coastal guns, and we've hit the Maru. Uh, you can see, you know, you can go through here. It's every single shot in the game down here. If you want to look at all that, I usually escape through, <clears throat> excuse me, and look at the combat summary. And here you can see invasion support off of Lingayan. You can see the hex where that's taking place into Lingayan. The uh, Terracuni Maru shell hits 12 heavy fires, heavy damage, because we have big coastal guns at Lingayan and we're firing away. That's good to hit a transport like that. Now, it's probably not going to save Lingayan, uh, but, you know, great. I mean, every transport that you can get of the Japanese is a real advantage because they, you know, one of the problems the Japanese have is just lack of transports in general, lack of supplies and fuel in general. So that's what you're sort of aiming for in some respects. Now, this is totally out of our control. He's just landing at Lingayan. We get the coastal guns going. Uh, and he gets quite a few casualties. We'll see if that sinks before he can get the ships out. It looks like we started hitting them um, at 8,000 yards, so it's possible they couldn't land. We'll see. Uh, okay, he's got amphib ships coming into Nauru. Uh, that's pretty uh, normal. It's a good move for him to come take Nauru. Uh, just takes one of these Australian bases off of our, our tally sheet. Um, okay, here's a PC also trying to hit down here at, Ling at Lingayan. So he's really bombarding here, trying to soften us up. 27, oh, this was San Fernando, my apologies. San Fernando, this is Lingayan, this is San Fernando. He's got uh, two PCs and an AP, a landing ship coming in. He had 21 casualties uh, during this landing. Uh, we had eight, okay, we didn't hit a ship, unfortunately. And now he's got troops unloading at San Fernando. Uh, during the amphibious assault, he lost two vehicles uh, trying to get on the beach at San Fernando. All right, repairing ships. And uh, now we end the night pulse. Every turn has two pulses. It has a night pulse, a 12-hour night pulse, and a 12-hour day pulse. Uh, and of course, you know, we don't fly a lot of uh, air missions at night. Um, that's just not something the Allies did, as, you know, very early in the war, certainly. The Japanese have better crafts, so they can do it. Oh, okay, this is that, uh, uh, how did I pronounce this? Terracani Maru, it's kind of hard to read there. Terracani Maru, uh, we have hit this again with the coastal guns, and so his, uh, invasion of Lingayan is, uh, running into some stiff resistance. Uh, this time only nine coastal guns fired. We hit him again with three shell hits, heavy fires, heavy damage. He's taken casualties. We'll see if we eventually, uh, see that one sink. Um, Nauru, he's landing. He's landing at San Fernando, but he's uh, also trying to soften that up first. Again, we had two coastal guns here at San Fernando. Uh, that's just something that the Japanese, you know, that's a risk they have to take. They have to land at these bigger bases, uh, and they almost all have big coastal guns. Seven casualties reported for the Allied side here, so we didn't really do much to him there. Uh, task Force loading, unloading at Babel Dawab. Uh, potentially. Now it's just centering over that. More mine sweeping going on. That's, so the Tawa Roomba and the Ballarat are out here trying to get rid of these Japanese mines. Um, 
and it looks like they're doing a pretty good job of it as you keep seeing sweeping seven mines, six mines, destroys a mine, etc., etc. All right, uh, yeah, look at that. This is the big Japanese task force <laughs> moving through here. Uh, I'm not sure what ship we have here. We located his task force. Yeah, I bet we did. It's hard to miss a task force of this size. You can see how cool the models, and now you see the actual firing. You can go through slowly. I hit escape, so it just moves through that. But this does give us a decent sense of what we've got going on here. We've got a couple of CSs. We've got a light cruiser. We've got a bunch of destroyers out here. Uh, lots of PBs. Uh, lots of AK. Wow, he's really. This is a massive force. Uh, we had the DD Pillsbury out here all on its own, trying to get out of Manila. Yeah, that didn't really work. Shell hits three on fire. Probably gonna go down here. Uh, okay. Task force has merged. All right. This is the SSI-155. Shoot, he did get a submarine down here. So we're trying to get uh, stuff out of here into Batavia. Uh, this is an AP, uh, AP, the Kajang. Oh, you know what? Actually, this is the one going up here to pick up things at Singkwang and Ponchanak. Uh, I was bringing a transport up here. Well, unfortunately, he found it, and it looks like that. Uh, yep. The APK Jang, now that is not a high value ship, not really, but the Japanese in here, uh, Lodric in very quickly into the sub lanes he needs to be in, uh, and the Kajang sinks. Okay, well, shoot. Uh, now he's going after a tanker out here, the Iris. Now, this is a very small tanker. Uh, this is kind of the crappiest tanker you have, but yet we need every bit of tanker. Uh, that we can get. Uh, wow. So he comes after it. SSI-166. The Iris is going to sink. It's got heavy damage. And down goes the Iris. Uh, well done, Lodric. Well done. He's in He's in right by Palembang. He's all the places he needs to be. Um, this is one of our Dutch subs. And our Dutch subs is out here. Our Dutch sub is out here. Uh, it looks like he found us. This is an escort ship. Um, yeah, ASW attack. So this is he found us near Cota Baru. Uh, he was sighted by an escort. Our Dutch sub was, uh, but he couldn't find us after that. But he knows we're out here, certainly. Uh, just ship fuel. Um, okay, this is his sub again after another one of our transports. Well, gosh darn it, Lodric? Yep, Allied ships, the Kida was out here. Uh, one shell hit, one torpedo hit, on fire, heavy damage. So the Japanese subs doing their business out here and the Kida sinks. So now we've lost a couple of transports and a tanker just in that little area there, uh, doing a good job. All right, you're seeing all of the detections, the sightings, the snoopings. Um, you know, he's got a lot of things flying around the map. Supposedly we're sighting things off the West Coast. My gosh, that would be the biggest stunner of all time. Lodric takes the West Coast away from us on turn two. I like to watch all of these when we're actually playing a competitive game. Um, you know, when you're playing the AI, maybe after you've played it enough times, it's probably not necessary. You kind of know what's happening. But against a human player, you just never know. Uh, and this can give you a lot of information about where he's moving, uh, where he's trying to land. As you can see, he is. He has brought an invasion force just to the northwestern part of Borneo. Uh, good idea. Good idea. We've got a bunch of our recon planes up and finding things. Here come the airstrikes. Uh, we've got bad weather actually over Sarawak. He's going to be bombing Ocean Island here. He comes in with 12 Nels, you see. Uh, let's see what he was trying to bomb. As we get through that, a morning air attack on the Aaron detachment. Okay. 
Uh, 12 Nels, no Japanese losses. He was bombing from 10,000 feet. Uh, two 250 kilogram bombs uh, were dropped here on that detachment. Now he's coming in on Clark Field, and we do get a big cap response. So we've got 12 Warhawks, 9 uh, P-35s, and we've got some other Warhawks that will follow along. Let's escape through that. He brought in eight zeros. Looks like we hit a few. I'm hoping. Uh, let's see. No, it says no Japanese losses. So we had, uh, you know, quite a bit of cap up. Uh, we had two P-40 Warhawks destroyed uh, over Clark Field. Uh, cap engage, that's what you want to see. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of intercepting. Uh, now that was his initial run, right? He brought the fighters in first. That scrambles our cap. He'll probably be bringing in the bombers later. Yeah, uh, now he's got 16 more zeros coming in at Manila. This is smart of him. Bring As the Japanese player, bring your fighters in first. That scrambles the cap and will reduce the amount of cap that the bombers encounter later. Now, you want to send them with some escort as well. You don't want them to come in naked. But uh, as you can see, uh, the zeros are a better plane than the Warhawk. There's just no debating that. Uh, one destroyed uh, zero, four destroyed Warhawks. We're always going to get the worst of that for the most part. Uh, he is now bombing uh, here at Hong Kong. This is just a turkey shootout here. We've got the DD Scout. Uh, hopefully, though, yeah, a ship like the Scout is fast enough sometimes to avoid it. We need to get these guys out of Hong Kong. Uh, but he missed there. He missed that on that bombing run. He tried to go after the scout. Sometimes I'll leave my destroyer uh, or two that you have at Hong Kong there because the game or uh, the game always prioritizes that for a naval bombing mission, and you, they're very hard to hit. Uh, three vowels in on the Chinese core at Chow Chow or Ka Chow. Uh, no damage. Uh, he's got five Mabels coming in here. Uh, okay, he's so he's doing some ground bombing. I like to see that. A smart Japanese player will to soften up the Chinese cores. Um, okay, now he's coming in here. All right, more action at Clark Field. We get a big cap response up. Uh, the unescorted bombers withdraw. Okay, that's... Uh, that's smart. Uh, Lilies and Sallies were coming in here. Warhawks. We got some up in the air. You see the air combat. He got two Lilies through. Uh, that's it. That's a good result for us, for him. Oh, shoot. Sorry. I meant to look at the damage there. He's got Nates and Anns coming in. Uh, this is out by Sin Yang. Uh, he's going to obviously try to soften that area up. Uh, okay. Not a lot happened there. Now he's going to bomb the 20th Chinese. Uh, he's coming in over Kota Baru. Now he's going to try to hurt, hit the third new Chinese. It's 12 Sonyas, 5 Nates. Okay. Uh, we did take 25 casualties there. So he did, you know, soften that ground unit up a little bit. He's probably thinking about attacking down this way and trying to cut off all of the troops we have moving west. Uh, he's over Singora over Kwantan, and then he comes in on Clark Field again. We get a good cap response up. His unescorted bombers withdraw. Okay, how many Nels does he get in? Uh, he brought in 15 Nels. We put up eight P-35s, 11 Warhawks, two other Warhawks in a different squadron, and we destroyed four Nels. Excellent. So the cap over Clark and Manila is, uh, is looking pretty good. Uh, now, they're never going to, you know, hold on there or something, uh, but you want to try to bloody it up as much as you can. Uh, he's bringing in four Nels here. Let's see what happens. Uh, he got one to the airfield. Okay, so four Nels. We had six P-35s. We, again, get 11 Warhawks total in. Uh, we destroyed two Nels, one damaged. Uh, he only got one airbase hit, so that's excellent. We're doing a good job of protecting Clark Field, which you really need so you can keep getting your cap up in the air uh, and try to knock out as many Japanese pilots as you can because ultimately with the Japanese, uh, one of their big problems coming later, you know, in, in 
1940, late 43, early 44, is a lack of good pilots. You just got to keep knocking his planes out of the air. Uh, here, uh, 139 WH-32s, that's our Dutch aircraft, came over here on a naval attack against the Mexico Maru. Uh, they did get 12 casualties reported. Uh, we're not showing... Yeah, it's a morning air attack on the task force. So good job. We got a naval attack in. It's just two of these 139s, uh, but we did cause some casualties. So that's great. So, so far, uh, I think Lodrick's done a really good job with the submarines getting south of Singapore. Uh, as you can see, all of our task forces here coming out, um, trying to get the heck out of Manila. Uh, we've got a lot of them out here, and we'll see how he responds to that. You can see all of his invasion forces here. I, I, I will say there have been times I've taken this entire force, come here, and tried to just wreck the Japanese landing forces, because a lot of times Japanese player will be super confident at the start like you know there's no way they're going to stop that in this case i have not done that at least i didn't do it in the first turn uh we'll see we'll see how much of these even get out of here but this was everything out of manila um all right more airstrikes he's coming in on hong kong as you can see i think he'll be going after the destroyer and he does and that's part of the reason i leave that destroyer there uh yeah we lost it so you've got the scout and the thanet uh, tor he, torpedo hits one. So he did um, destroy a destroyer out here uh, with a torpedo. Uh, you don't see that often. A lot of times those destroyers can uh, avoid that. Now he's got Betty's coming in here. Uh, I forget which island this is. Uh, this is the Dos Hermanos. These are those little AKLs that we talk about. So he did get a torpedo in on that. That's going to sink almost certainly. Uh, yeah, these are those little 4,000 endurance, 1,000 cargo, uh, and they're both going to go down. The Dos Hermanos already has. It's going to be very interesting to see the ground combat here because I did counterattack in several places uh, just as kind of like, why not? It's the best chance you've got against some of these Japanese troops. So I've hit back at them. Uh, we'll see. Uh, you can see these are all sightings, you know, what's going on out here. Now as the aircraft are landing, air transport phase, uh, we will start running some air transport uh, for supplies to places like Buna. Uh, the AVD Childs has sunk. Okay, that's destroyer tender. Uh, again, those are, what are tenders? I know that question comes up a lot. Like, what the heck are they actually? What they are are floating resupply bases. Now, when I say a destroyer tender, that is a tender that can rearm destroyers. So if you can't get them into a port that's big enough to rearm them, which is generally a port seven or better, uh, they can rearm at smaller ports, but not very quickly. That's for certain. Uh, okay, uh, you can have one of those AVDs sitting. Now you want to disband it, have it sitting in a port. Let's say it was sitting in Porta Princesa. You could have your destroyers come in there and they can rearm. Uh, he's got a cruiser banging away here at Lingayan. Uh, wow, oh, this is a lot. <laughs> you can tell I hit escape and you can see all of that bombardment. Oh, he's got a heck of a lot more than one cruiser. He's got two cruisers, two light cruisers, and a lot of destroyers. We had 21 coastal guns fire back. We suffered 57 casualties. Our air base took hits, uh, our runway took hits, and our port took hits. Uh, doesn't look like our coastal guns got much accomplished there. All right, we've got invasion support off San Fernando, those two PCs and an AP again. Did that say it withdrew its landing troops? Ah, shoot, I wish, I, well, I'll have to go back and read that in the actual log. Okay, now he's coming in on Sin, uh, Sin Kuang. Uh, very smart, get over here on the northwest side of 
Borneo Sarawak. As you can see, our, our coastal guns fire, but he is in here quickly, uh, much quickly than the AI ever does. Uh, so he's into Sink Wing, uh, not allowing us to get those troops out. That's where I was sending those transports to try to get them out. Against the AI, you usually can get them out. But now it looks like he's also landing uh, at Kudat. Uh, so at the northeast corner, so he's into the northwest and the northeast of Borneo Sarawak. Uh, he did suffer 20 casualties on the landing. All right, there's another pulse. Land move attack phase. So the ships are basically done, and this is going to be all the land attacks and combats up in here. Um... This should be interesting. Okay, we've got ground com combat. He's pushing back at Changsha. Now, these units are already moving back to Changsha, but we can see his strength now. 388, 310, 173. Uh, we don't have much to... <laughs> we don't have anything. Those guys uh, are going to have to retreat. They got the heck out of here. You see they popped down here to this hex. His odds were 66 to 1... Uh, he took 268 casualties. We took 37.19. All right. Uh, 52nd Chinese Corps. Now, we're a little stronger here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm not even sure he can take that hex. Uh, I don't think he can. Now, when you look at the uh, assault values, that doesn't always tell the entire tale because the adjusted will be better for the Japanese. They have better uh, commanders, for one thing. But we did end up with a really nice adjusted. Actually, ours improved. Uh, this is down here, right? This is Nan. I'm sorry. I thought it was up here. It's uh, right here outside of Nanning. Uh, we are dropping back to Nanning. Uh, but we actually got much the better of him here. He took 265. We took 43 in casualties. Excellent. Um, this is where I... Okay, he did a deliberate attack on Lingayan. I'm going to be doing a shock attack on Lingayan. As you can see, our assault values start to go down. He's got a 108, 116, 47. We're going to get absolutely mauled here at Lingayan. Uh, yep, and they have now captured Lingayan. We didn't even get a chance to attack back. Uh, he uh, was immediately on the attack. Ground combat, Lingayan. Um, Japanese deliberate attack, 288 to 121. When you do the adjusted odds, ooh, that's because we had it set up for an attack and not for him to defend. Uh, well done by Lodric there, getting in, getting in fast. I was going to try to attack him back. That ends up hurting us a little bit. It's not the biggest deal. He was going to either take it this turn or next turn. He took it this turn. 1146, 48 on the casualties. Uh, this is at San Fernando. Yeah, he's got a lot of stuff here at San Fernando. <laughs> Our unit there is not going to, and he captures San Fernando. So he's into Lingayan and San Fernando right away. Uh, 120 to 41. Uh, we did have a fort level, but it just didn't matter. He took 70 casualties. We took 1412. All right, uh, Batangas. So the three places where he had landed, he's immediately doing deliberate attacks. Uh, smart, and he captures Batangas. Now, we did get all of our planes out there, but as you can see, I mean, he's already started to constrict us here down to Clarkfield and Manila. Uh, again, he took 111. We took 823. You're going to see that a lot early on, uh, whether in the Philippines or in China. We're just completely overwhelmed. Now he's attacking these forces that are here at Kota Baru. That should go very well for him as well. Um, and they've attached, or <laughs> they have taken over Kota Baru. All right. And we're retreating towards Temela. And he's in pursuit. Uh, 20, 256 to 6. Not a whole lot we can do about that. Uh, we did take uh, some aircraft losses. Now, you may say, why didn't you fly them out? Well, he bombed us before. These uh, air units were already damaged. They were just sitting on the ground. Japanese ground uh, losses, 117. We took 1882. Now, I had those guys <laughs> trying to move the heck out of there, uh, but they just couldn't get out. Now, he's in at Kwantan. Uh, he should also take this fairly easily. 
yep, and he's now captured Quanton and Kota Baru. He's uh, going to take Sinkwang. He's uh, well on his way in the Philippines, so moving very quickly. Uh, this was 92 to 25. Uh, we lost some more planes that were just stuck on the ground. He took 216 casualties. We took 1252. All right. Uh, Nehru, he has landed at Nehru, and he will take Nehru. All right, so he's captured Nehru. That was an Australian island. He's now uh, going to try to capture Singhuang. Not a whole lot we can do about that. Uh, did he take this? Oh, he was just bombarding it this first turn. Okay, uh, all right. Well, we'll see if he follows that on. Uh, with an attack next turn, I'm sure he will. Okay, we're now expanding our fortifications around the map. Not really sure. Uh, we didn't get a sighting, as far as I know, on his main task force. You can see all the things we tried to get out of the Philippines up there. Uh, I'll just escape through this. You get the idea. The important uh, bases were expanding their fortifications. Uh, no shocker. All right, got some things ready uh, or available for reassignment. These are pilots, obviously. I guess they could be command naval commanders, but they're pilots. All right, now we can see everything that's arriving at different places. Um, as things start to move around the map, uh, I put a lot of things into March Field. I'm actually going to move them up to Los Angeles and just have all of my air running out of Los Angeles and San Francisco. May as well. Um, all right, lots of things combining and moving. So that was December 10th. This will be December old. No, that was December 9th. This is December 10th. Sorry. Uh, so there's two, you know, we're playing two day turns. So we get to see both days. He starts bombarding at Singhuang right away. All right. He unloaded at Kroat there. We're detecting more mines and destroying them. That's why you've got to get your mine sweepers up immediately. In some, you know, in Singapore, in the Philippines, you've got to get your mine sweepers up uh, because they will wreck you if you don't have those cleared. All right, off Nomaya. Wow. Okay. Uh, interesting. It seems he's got a sub down here already, a Japanese SSI-10 sub-attack near Nomaya. This is our minesweeper, the Chevrolet. It also has a little bit of ASW ability. Uh, okay, another Japanese sub trying to get in on the tanker Anastasia, and it has hit our tanker Anastasia. So we got some things out, some things we didn't. Uh, you know, you just got to try to get them out. Uh, but he's in big sh trouble now. Shell hits one, torpedo hits two, on fire, heavy damage. Now, I've got a lot of destroyers in this area. Uh, and so we, it'll be very interesting to see um, what kind of anti-sub work we can do. Now, this is down at Batavia. He's, we've got a Japanese sub here. I'm not sure if we found him or he found us. We're about to find out. Uh, sub attack. Uh, this is an AM, so a minesweeper. The Pieter de Bitter. Uh, okay, we tried to find him. He tried to find us. Now we have the tanker Augustana. Um, phew, thank goodness that torpedo missed anyway. So maybe the Augustana can get out of here. Uh, we've lost two tankers, and I think we've lost two transports. Those are the headliners uh, that we've lost. Okay, we've got major flooding. 
Uh, they abandoned the Sea Dragon. Now he's out here by Numai again. It's this SSI-10. Uh, this is our Minesweeper. So we're hunting for him. He's shooting at us. I think this was a sub-attack. So he came after us first. The uh, torpedoes miss. Uh, this is... Our AM is out here. Another Minesweeper. I think that was anti-sub work. And I think we found him here. Yeah, ASW attack near Billiton. Uh... And so, you know, we're going to start putting pressure on him. And like I say, I've got a lot of destroyers in and around Batavia and Surubaya. But it's something we're really going to have to check out this next turn because he's obviously very aggressive with his subs here early on. Uh, good job by him. Um, okay. PG Tulsa looks like it's going down. Major flooding aboard. The uh, okay, the cuttlefish went down. The sea dragon's going to go down. A lot of these subs are going to go down. There's just no way to save them. He had already uh, bombed them before it was even our turn. Uh, the task force now off Singa. Sing it's always so hard for me to say Singayan, Singkawang, Singkawang. Uh, sure, that's what we're going to call it in this game. Singkawang. Uh, we did hit him. The AP out here. Uh, Hakasun Maru shell hits five. He's on fire. So our coastal guns have been doing a pretty good job of hitting a few transports here or there. Uh, okay, he's going to assault Miri now. Uh, so he's landing incredibly strongly here on northern Borneo Sarawak. Uh, okay, unloading at Miri. Now you're never going to keep those anyway. He's also now moving into Ocean Island. All right, and so, you know, we're firing back. He did take some casualties. We've got coastal guns here as well. And he's unloading on the beach at Ocean Island. Okay, 22 casualties reported uh, on that unload, but he's going to take that immediately. He's now into Kuching. So, wow, he's going to just go for all these bases right off the top. Sometimes Japanese player will land at one of them and then march across and take the other. He's decided to take the uh, naval route. Uh, okay, uh, that's fine. Unloading near Kuching. We do have a decent British force there, but not enough to hold anything. He's now landing here uh, at Mwaban. Uh, okay, he took 224 casualties doing that, but he's gonna have uh, or he's gonna have Manila completely surrounded here very very soon. Okay. All right, so that was the first, the night pulse, and now we're into a morning pulse here. Uh, we're reacting to a lot of different things. Like I said, I've got a lot of ASW out there. He's being really aggressive with those subs. Now it paid off for him, uh, but I think we can get back on him a little bit here because, like I said, we've got a lot of ASW out here. Uh, Nakamaru, okay, coastal guns fired at him. Uh, he's landing at Miri. He's also landing up here by Jesselton. He's going to take Ocean Island. Uh, he's going to soften it up first if he could. Uh, eight casualties there. Now he's off at Kuching. And this is what you have to do as a Japanese player. You have to be full tilt from the start to have any kind of chance. All right, we're retreating from some of this enemy surface combat as we try to get out of here. Uh, I have some going around this way. I have some coming down here. I tried to split them up, you know, as much as I could. Uh, this doesn't look promising. <laughs> this little task force. Uh, let's see what happens. But Yeah, whoa, okay. Uh, the PG Asheville shell hits six, torpedo hits one. He's sunk. He's got carriers and destroyers, or carriers, cruiser, a cruiser and destroyers out here. Uh, we're reacting to some of his uh, activity. This guy is continuing on towards Darwin. Uh, let's see if he could make it. I highly doubt it at this point. Uh, yeah, this is the AO Pe uh, Pecos uh, shell hit, so a big AO there. Uh, he is hit and sunk. All right, we've got another ship. 
uh, that's all on its own. And again, when he gets down in this area, there's just not a whole hell of a lot you can do about it. This is the AP President Madison. Too bad. That's a really valuable ship. Uh, shell hits 20 and is sunk. I got all, I've got all of these on full speed to the extent I could. Uh, some of them just don't have near the uh, endurance to do it. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's not showing the task force itself. Uh, it's just showing reaction and showing you out of which hex it's doing that. Uh, okay, now here comes our ASW work. Like I said, I've got destroyers out here. We're hunting for these submarines. Um, the Evertson. This was actually a sub-attack. He tried to attack our destroyer. Uh, he launched two torpedoes. He bottomed out. Uh, but that's, you know, what the subs do. They're going to bottom, bottom out to get out of here. This is off Nomaya again. Uh, our minesweeper, his sub. He knows where we're going. Uh, oh, okay. We've got a destroyer that was already hurt. The Piri, uh, it's now got heavy damage from a Japanese sub out here. The helm sinks, so now we've lost several destroyers too. Uh, okay, Nell's near Manila. This has been about what you would expect from a good Japanese player. He has certainly, you know, taken down uh, numerous things uh, in really obvious spots. The, you know, out here in the Sulu Sea, uh, out of Singapore, by Palembang, near Nomaya. Now, he hasn't sunk anything near Nomaya yet. Uh, we'll see. All right, these are all sightings. You get the idea. Now he's starting his bombing campaign. Um, we got one P... We got one Warhawk up, but I think it got uh, knocked out. Yeah, one destroyed. He had eight zeros in here. Um, There's severe storms at Iba. Uh, but he came in anyway. Now he's going to have Nels hit Ocean Island uh, just to soften that up. We took 64 casualties there. Now he's coming in on Clark Field. We get a huge cap response up because he we haven't allowed him to get to the air base here. We've done a good job holding that off. We destroy three zeros. He destroys a P-35 and a Warhawk. Okay, but we he did not... Um, have any bombers with that so no damage to the runway we get cap up here at Manila he's got 15 zeros I thought I saw 15 uh, Warhawks were up let's see how we did there seven zeros again uh, oh shoot sorry uh, the Bettys are coming in on Hong Kong okay six Bettys uh, on the Thanet and the Thracian uh, but no dice there Oh, he's bombing. It's showing us it's coming all the way from Formosa in on Clark Field. Oh, no, actually. <laughs> Did I not take that off? That is hilarious. Um, I had forgotten to take this order off. So we have three B-17s here. I thought I'd flown them all out. But you know what I, happened is they were damaged... Uh, when I gave back the turn, I think they've now repaired. We went and bombed on Taiwan Formosa uh, with three B-17s. Look at that. How freaking funny is that? Um, we hit his air base and his runways. How funny. He took 16 casualties. Okay, well, we've now done one offensive air attack. That's hilarious. Uh, we got to try to get those B-17s out of there. Uh, very lucky. But it does show you he doesn't have much cap or anything back here. Why would he? Uh, okay, we're just, you know, it's like Doolittle's raid there. We're just showing him uh, what we could do, potentially. Uh, he's He did make it in on Clark Field this time, and he got runway hits, you see there. 11 zeros, 9 Sallies, 8 Lilies. We got 10 P-35s up, 14 Warhawks, and one other Warhawk. We are doing a good job of knocking some of this out. Two zeros, one Sally, one Lily. Uh, we had a P-35 destroyed and a Warhawk destroyed. This is the big one. You just can't allow this runway to get uh, pocked too much uh, because you can't get that cap up, right? And then it's just a turkey shoot. Um, he's bombing ground units out here by Xinyang. Okay, we took some casualties there. 
Now he's bombing down here by Canton. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be moving up this way. You can see he's got a pretty decent sized force there. Uh, no Japanese losses. We took 148 casualties, so that ground bombing uh, really, you know, going to soften us up there. Uh, he's now looking out and over some of our other forces for some ground attacks. All right, it looks like he's going to want to move this way, uh, or at least he's bombing right up here. 62nd Chinese Corps taking a beating and also down this way. Again, if he can get to this roadway, he cuts off a lot of these troops. Uh, now they can go a little further south too. They can get out, but this is their most direct route to get back to Changsha. All right, he's approaching some ships here. Uh, this is the AK Aso Maru. Uh, he did not hit them. He's at 20,000 feet there. High bomb. Back in on Clark Field with some cap. Now he did get quite a few nails through, and that's the problem. He's got such got you in numbers by so much, he can just keep sending them in and in. You can't always get cap up. Uh, so we we did destroy four nails and one damage. Uh, a recon craft of ours got destroyed on the ground. He's hitting the runway hard, though. 17 that time. Uh, we're going to get to a point. You know, we're going to have to take him somewhere else because Clark Field is not going to be usable anymore. Uh, we destroyed a nail. Our cap engaged. We took no losses. That's good. Wow, I can't believe those B-17s, I didn't change their orders. I'm sure that I just saw they were damaged, and I thought, well, they're, they'll never make it off. But they repaired in one turn, and then went and bombed Formosa. Hilarious. Uh, the Kobe Maru. Oh, okay. We have torpedo bombers out here. Uh uh, actually, these are maybe mid-level bombers. 139 WH, I just can't remember. Uh, we're trying to go after the Cobra Maru. I've got these guys on naval attack. It was in severe storms. We did not hit them, though. All right, PG Tulsa, patrol gunboat goes down. Yet another ship down. I think it's the most ships I've lost in turn one in a long time. Part of it is this two-turn thing, and I, I, you know, he just ravaged us at Manila. Um, that's all right. I mean, we, you know, we'll have plenty of ships. That's not going to be our problem. We've just got to stop his land grab as soon as we can. Sighting of a potential submarine north of Australia. All right, ground bombing. Five Mabels in. We did take casualties. Johnston Island. Ah, he's going to turn around now. That's, that's, that's the Kido Butai, his main task force, the task force that um hit pearl harbor he's going to turn around he's like well why not i mean these planes are sitting around doing nothing so he's going to bomb johnston island and evidently maybe come after johnston island we'll see uh we did damage two kates uh our minesweeper out here the robin uh did get hit and is going to sink All right, he's coming after these ships near Kuching. Again, we were trying to get him out of here. Can we? Uh, well, the Aso Maru. Oh, this is us again. Gosh darn it, I keep getting confused. I'm so used to getting attacked. So we're flying out of Sinkawang uh, on a naval attack, trying to hit this Aso Maru. Sometimes you get lucky. You're going to lose those planes anyway for the most part. So you may as well just take a shot at it. All right, he's going to bomb Kwantan.
Uh, runway hits at Quanton, not going to matter. We're, you know, we've got everything out of there. Uh, it did take four runway hits. He's he's hurting his own runway, right? I mean, he's going to take Quanton, so. All right, aircraft landing. Go into the air transport phase. Nothing doing there. Aircraft landing. Uh, we're combining some subgroups of different planes uh, or, or land units. All right, we can kind of flip through that. Uh, another sub attack here. Uh, the Hong Peng. Everybody Hong Peng tonight. Uh, he's hitting. This is another unit trying to get out of Singapore. And man, he got there and really wrecked us. Uh, right off this island. This is where we come down through to try to get to Batavia. Uh, it's on fire. The Hong Pang is going to go down and it does sink. So now we've lost three transports. I think we've lost like three destroyers and two or three tankers. Well done. The uh, Rochambeau looks like it may go down. Uh, they're the repairs are you know, some of these things didn't had a terrible float damage, and I tried to get them out anyway. You may as well. I mean, what, what else is going to happen? I mean, they're just going to sit in port and get taken out, uh, and a lot of those are starting to sink as they get off the Philippines. Uh, he's unloading on Ocean Island. Okay. He's unloading at Kuching. Maybe we can hit something here. Yeah, heavy damage on the Kagamaru. Um... Our coastal guns are a firing. Now he's unloading here at Mabuan. It's the end of that pulse. And here comes the land move attack phase, which happens after all of the air and naval stuff. Land happens last. Uh, he's going to take Ocean Island. All right, no reason to watch that massacre. Uh, and so now the Japanese start to move base by base, and that's what he's got to do to try to gain points. Uh, now he's coming into Sink Wang, and we will probably lose Sink Wang. Uh, ground combat, allied bombardment attack. Okay, sure. Um, we are n very much outgunned here, uh, but hey, bombarding him doesn't hurt. Uh, he's going to try to land here with a pretty small force actually into Kuching, uh, but it's probably not going to matter. Uh, well, actually we did. Oh, this was our own bombardment attack. I see. So we're kind of equally matched out here. So we bombarded as he came ashore. Now we're expanding our fortifications. That's fine. We don't need to watch all that. You can see it down here. Kingscote, Geelong, Seduna, Newcastle, Greymouth, so on, so, for, so forth. Uh, I think that's about going to do it. We have a lot of things arriving, obviously, and that's the end of the turn. Uh, wow, a lot happened. Uh, when we come back next time, we'll obviously go through all the reports and see all the stuff we lost. We have lost a lot of naval assets. Now, it's not crippling by any means or anything, but uh, he's doing a great job. Uh, this is going to be a fun game. Should be a real battle royale. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, next episode up, we'll go through. We'll decide or you know, figure out what all sunk, what hasn't sunk, what we need to move next, uh, because Lodrick's coming and he's coming hot. Anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.